In this video, we're going to consider time conversions and time calculations. So let's have a look at what this entails. Firstly, let's go back to your grade seven here and look at some basic clockwork calculations. So I'm hoping that you know that this first picture here indicates half an hour and that we can also write it as 0 0.5 hours and that that is 30 minutes. Very basic concept, but remember this might get tricky when you have to do calculations. So always a good idea just to recap your basics before we launch into something more difficult. So in the next picture, we have a quarter of an hour, which is 0 0.25 hours. And this is not 25 minutes, but 15 minutes. This is a common mistake um, that people make to say that 0 0.25 hours is 25 minutes. Well, in fact, it's just 15 minutes. In the next one, it is three quarters of an hour, which is 0 0.75 hours and 45 minutes. And the last one here is a third of an hour, which is 0 0.33333 recurring hours, which is 20 minutes. So try to remember these basics because that will make the next section a lot easier. Luckily, we can also do this on our calculator to convert. Um, so here is just a quick demo on how to do this conversion on your calculator. So you might be familiar with the S to D button converting um, the standard fraction to the decimal, but there's also the degrees, minutes and seconds button. Now, although we use it more in geography when we work with longitude and latitude, it is really helpful in this context. So finding this button over here, the degrees, minutes, second button, we can use also in terms of hours, minutes, and seconds, as well as the button that you should be known by now is from the standard fraction to your decimal fraction. So in MassLit, we get this in a context where different times are given. So here we have an explanation about the doozy canoe marathon that you might be familiar with, and also the details of the fastest canoeist um, versus the slowest canoeist. Now you could be asked to calculate the total time it takes for the fastest canoeist to finish this race. And when done manually, this can be quite a lengthy process, but I'm going to go through it with you anyway. So my suggestion is always to write it hours underneath each other, minutes underneath each other, and seconds underneath each other. So on the first day, it was two hours, 43 minutes, and 56.3 seconds. That is a decimal, so you can just leave it like that. On the second day, it was 2 hours, 58 minutes, and 37.39 seconds. And on the third day, it was 2 hours, 23 minutes, and 34.38 seconds. And we're now going to add up each of these columns, giving me 6 hours, 124 minutes, and 128.07 seconds. But now this looks a bit funny and we would like to convert the seconds to minutes. So you might know that 120 seconds will give me two minutes. So I'm gonna write here plus two, and then I'm left over with 8.07 seconds. So it's like you're carrying the seconds over to the minutes column now. So in the minutes column, you might know that 120 minutes is two hours. So therefore, that's going to be added to the hours over here, which means you are left over with six minutes because it's the four plus the two that you carried over. And then lastly, you can see that it is eight hours. Now, this method is fairly easy, but if you would like to know how to do this on your calculator, let's quickly have a look. So on your calculator, you would also use the degrees, minutes, seconds button, and you would say two hours, 43 minutes and 56.3 seconds, pressing that degrees, minutes, seconds after each of those 
categories, if I can call them that. So after the hours, the minutes and the seconds that you type in. So adding them all up like that, pressing the button, the degrees, minutes, seconds button after each of those numbers, you also get the total of eight hours, six minutes and 8.0 seconds. Now, although it shows degrees, minutes and seconds on your calculator, remember that you are just using this button to help you work with hours, minutes and seconds. So remember to not make those little symbols when you write down the answer, but to write it as hours, minutes and seconds. You can also be asked to do speed calculations. So if I would like to know what the fastest canoeist speed was on the first day, I need to consider his time of 45 or the distance of 45 kilometers and another 15 kilometers of portage. And this portage just means that there are sections of the river that he would be unable to to paddle on so he would have to carry his canoe for these sections. So there was 45 kilometers that he could um, be in his boat and then 15 kilometers where he had to carry his boat. So this gives us a total distance of 45 plus 15 which is 60 kilometers. Quite a long day for him. Also his time for the first day was 2 hours 43 and 56.3 seconds. So you might remember the speed distance time triangle where we say that speed equals distance over time. And in this case, I have the distance of 60 and I have the time, which is a little bit strange because it's hours and minutes and seconds and all kinds of strange things that you might not normally get. But once again, we can type this whole thing in on our calculator. So instead of trying to convert it or using the ratio method, which um, is quite a simple method to do it manually, um, we can also do it on our calculator. So let's see how that is done. So using the fraction button, you can put the 60 at the top because that is your distance in kilometers. And then at the bottom, you have two hours, 43 minutes and 56.3 seconds. Remember once again that although you use the degrees, minutes and seconds button, um, that you use it just for hours, minutes and seconds. So just don't get that idea confused. I'll answer here, which I'm going to round off to two decimal places. Hence the squiggle equal sign here is 21,96 kilometers per hour. You could also use this example of when you have kilometers an hour, but the distance that you run is quite short, meaning that you will finish a race within a certain amount of minutes. So let's consider Dion and Carla here. You know that the twins are very good athletes and they run the park run, um, which is five kilometers. Carla does it in the speed of 12 kilometers an hour, but Dion runs it in a time in a speed of 15 kilometers an hour. So having to work out their respective um, times for this, we will once again use our speed distance time triangle. And let's see how it will work in this case if we need the time. So we have speed equals distance over time. And if I need time, I need to say distance, which is in this case is five kilometers for each of them, divided by the speed, which for Carla is 12 kilometers an hour, and for Dion is 15 kilometers an hour. So let's see how we can do this on the calculator and what the answer means once we type it in, because we will be getting a fraction. So for Carla, if I type in five over 12, that's a fraction, but I can convert it to zero hours, 25 minutes and zero seconds, meaning that Carla did the race in 25 minutes. Doing the same for Dion, we see that he did it in zero hours and 20 minutes. So I actually don't need the squeal here. So Carla did the 
park run in 25 minutes, while Dion did the park run in 20 minutes.